Even this amount is known among our community. The person is known in the family. One particular wife that she was so scared of her husband because her husband was somebody known for a very sharp eye. He was known for somebody very hasad and very envious that he was known amongst his family also. And he always tried to hide away certain blessings that Allah bestowed upon them. And this uh, lady, this happened in Egypt, we, uh, this particular family, this lady had some birds and some chickens. And one day, the husband did went in order to look at the birds, not just to see the birds and so on. And he was looking at the birds and he went. And so this wife then went later to check on the birds and to feed the birds. And she discovered that all the birds died. All the birds died because of this sharp, evil eye that she knew that the husband was guilty of. And sometimes somebody can be, be very deliberate in this hasad eye, or sometimes somebody they don't know. In the time of the beloved of Muhammad, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Rasulullah was traveling. Now, Muhammad was traveling in between Makkah and Medina. So what happened was a Sahabi, his name was Sahab ibn Hunayn. So Sahab ibn Hunayn, Allah blessed him with a beautiful body, and Allah blessed him with a beautiful skin. Well, many, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed him with nice body, and Allah blessed him with a physical health. So Allah blessed the Sahabi with such beautiful skin. And Sahab ibn Hunayn, that he went to take a bath. And when he took a bath, because of the one expedition, there was other companions also in the company, and he, just some part of his body, he revealed. Some, some part of his body were exposed. And because some, of, some part of his body were exposed, there was another Sahabi, and his name was Amir. So Amir, subconsciously, then said something. And Amir looked at the body of Sahar ibn Hunayn. And he said, without attaching the wording, MashaAllah. And that, inshaAllah, I will like to explain that how we need to protect our family and our children and ourselves from the hasad and the evil eye and what we need to say. So Sahar, without saying the word, MashaAllah, Sahar then said, MashaAllah, he said, oh, no, you have a very beautiful skin. And he had a very beautiful body. The moment Sahal or Amir Maf uttered the word, you know, he's got a beautiful skin, immediately the Sahabi Sahal ibn Hunayn, he fell down. And he fell unconscious. And they carried him to his house. And he was just laying there and he couldn't move. So obviously they went to our beloved Nabi Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in order to inform our beloved Nabi Muhammad about this particular happening. Nabi Muhammad sallam, then asked uh, the group and the other companions that we went to Rasulullah on this expedition between Makkah and Medina, what happened? Did somebody commend something evil? So they said, Ya Rasulullah, there was Amir. Amir just said that Sahal's body is very beautiful. Nabi Muhammad sallam, then immediately went to Amir. And he went in such a rage of anger. And he then uttered the first hadith that started by khutbah was Nabi Muhammad then said to the Sahabi, Amir, inna al-ayna la taqtul, that do you buy of your eye, that you, do you want to kill this person? Do you want to be the cause of killing this person? And then Nabi Muhammad then gave the companions advice. And Nabi Muhammad gave us advice. And the advices of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling us we should not deliberately display our ni'mas. And this is something very concerning Jama'ah. Because nowadays we see all on social media that people display the ni'mah of the children, the ni'mah favor that Allah blessed them, that the children graduated. And they sometimes display, uh, they expose or display uh, the beautiful marriage. Or they display that they're sitting at the particular a restaurant and they're eating. This is contrary to the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Nabi Muhammad went to such a point where Rasulullah to avert attention and to protect us from the evil eye. 
that Rasulullah encouraged and inspired where children were very like handsome, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed children. So there was that particular group of children and they were very like beautiful. So that Muhammad sallallahu then instructed the Sahabas to cut their hair short. Now Muhammad then said to the Sahabas, the companions, cut all their hair. Why to cut their hair? To avert the people's attention on that child. And I couldn't understand when I, many years ago, or when I, especially when I come to the elderly, and I've always noticed at the, at the good mouth. When a good mouth is when a child is being born, then I saw they always made a, like a, not a cross, like an arrow. They made an arrow on the child's forehead. And I couldn't understand why is it that you guys are making an arrow on the child's forehead. Only after preparing this khutbah and reading about the Sunnah of Rasulullah, the ultimate intention was to avert the people's attention and looking at the child with the hasad eye. So because the child is being is very pretty, and so everybody will look at the child, and they will look at the child, and without saying, MashaAllah, then tomorrow you find that particular child being sick. And it really happened in the time of Rasulullah, when Umm Salama and Muhammad went to visit Umm Salama. So when Rasulullah entered the home of Umm Salama, there was a girl playing, and this young girl, he was playing, and have you noticed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that there were some marks and traces a different color on the face of this child. And immediately Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu then said to the, child, to the family that you need to perform ruqya on this child. Ruqya as a means of recital that we have to recite as a protection for the child and for our family. And Rasulullah then said to the family that this child is being affected because of the of the evil eye, because of the aim, because of sometimes that somebody is hasad and somebody is envious and you look at the child and because of looking at the child, maybe Allah did not bless him with the child and then the child then finds himself were being affected by this jealousy and the evil eye. So there are numerous examples Jamal Muslimi that we can mention and one of the first examples of this illness, of this disease, of hasad, of jealousy, the first event that happened, and this event first was the event that we know of our father, our father Adam salam. When Adam was, Allah created Adam, and then similarly Allah given certain ranking to Shaitan, he believes, when Allah given him such high ranking, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, and Allah commanded Iblis to make sujood, to prostrate for Adam. So the first crime that caused, and this crime is so serious, this crime of hasad, this crime of being envious, and shaitan being so envious that shaitan then declined and refused to make sujood on Adam. And yet Allah given us command to to shaitan to make that time he was like an uh, uh, honorable um, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has given him certain ranking and he then felt that he's better than Adam and that's also some of the effects of jealousy and hasad where somebody you find in communities you find it even working spaces where the one employee got a better job or a better raise or better position in the company so the one will feel that I'm better than you. Why is it that, that they, have, they have given you a better status? Why is it that they have given, they have given you, a bit, uh, you know, a better superior ranking? And because of the, the person not knowing, becoming so envious, that is hasad. And even it happened among students of students also. Among students, they study and they feel, why is it that his mark is better than my mark? And his results is better than my results. And it happens even among family members also. And that's why we have to be very, very careful. So even if we know somebody in our family, that we know somebody, and this person is very, he's not a person that always displays the qualities of happiness. And that's the origin of Hassan. You're not really happy that Allah bless that person with a particular ni'mah. And you find this, when it's an uncle or uncle, 
And you come, they never ever make a beautiful comment. They always make a, a very bad comment. So because of you knowing this, this is a person's nature, there is always better for you to avoid dressing up that child or looking nice and going to that particular family. And it happened. Another Sahabi also, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him also with a beautiful child. And so he dressed up the child and nicely. And he went to one of, uh, one of the persons in the community. And this child, was, the person will praise him. And that's why I have to be very, very careful in advocating certain praises. And he was just advocating praises and saying, oh, mashallah. Not even saying, don't say mashallah. Oh, the child is so beautiful, beautiful clothing. He looks so nice. And the person left the gathering. And the child was displaying, and a horse knocked the child, and the child died. So there are numerous examples, Jamaa. One particular reason, reason uh, recent example also, there was this female, she uh, attended a, a public forum, and she then did a presentation on the public forum where she mentioned about the benefit of breastfeeding. And she spoke about the importance of breastfeeding. And she breastfed a child for two years, and the child never ate any type of or any, any other formula of milk. And Alhamdulillah, she praised the child in order to educate the public. And she said the child is like very healthy because of the benefit of breastfeeding. And we know that. It's mentioned in the Quran. And she went on to explain the benefit, and everybody looked at the child, and the child is so healthy, and the skin is nice. Wallahi, immediately after the pre presentation concluded, Immediately after that, a child became sick and a child was paralyzed and they did not know why a child become, became paralyzed. So that's why we need to be very careful sometimes mentioning certain favors that Allah bless you with. It's not everybody that can will handle that favor well. It's not everybody that will be happy for you, Jama'ah. Wallahi, and sometimes even is the closest to us. And that again we can draw from the Quran, the Quranic module, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Abu Yusuf, and Abu Yusuf was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and at the very tender age, Nabi Yusuf had a dream. And in his dream, he have seen certain blessings where Allah inspired him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divinely revealed to him, and he have seen where the sun and the moon and all the creation and the stars made sujood to him, they bowed down to him. And him being at a very tender age, he did not understand uh, the dream. And he went to his father, his father being a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some form of clarity. And his father, the, the first thing the father said, the one the father praised Allah, because Allah is the one that gives that ni'mah. Allah is the one that gives ni'mah of health. Allah is the one that gives ni'mah of children. Allah is the one that gives ni'mah of reason. Allah. So you're not really showing your aggression to the person, but you're showing your aggressiveness and your unhappiness to Allah, because Allah is the one that decreed. So Nabi Yaqub, knowing the nature of human being, and these are children of a prophet, the first advice Nabi Yaqub gave to his son Yusuf, and he said to him, his son, Oh my son, do not convey this dream to your brothers. Don't tell them. And Abu Yusuf being a small child, not knowing the effects of the evil eye. He didn't know. He was like a child, six years old. What does he know about the, the evil eye? What does he know about Hasad? So he doesn't know the outcome of Hasad. So he just by the way said to his brothers about this incident, about this dream. And because of his brothers, was so, they were so envious. And they were so jealous of the status that Allah, Allah had given to their brother. And Allah given such status to the whole family that Allah nominated from the family as a brother that he will be the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be the messenger of Allah. So the danger of conveying this ni'mah to our family, it can be sometimes very serious. And it became so serious, Jama'ah, that it... They, you know, it control or consume their minds that they had to make a choice. They couldn't handle this ni'mah that Allah blessed their brother with. That they had to make a choice either to 
kill the brother or to make sure they're going to hit the brother from this particular area. Imagine, children of a prophet, they went to that point because they were so consumed with this thought of hasad and jealousy you cannot handle that Allah selected their brother to be the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they executed this particular, this jealousy and they went to the point where they started kicking and beating up their own brother and the one was about to kill the brother and the other one had some form of sympathy for the brother. He said, no man, we would rather throw him down in a well. And they threw him down in a well. Where he started from Jama'a, he started from Hassan, from this evil eye. And that's why sometimes also, I can always tell one, one uh, elderly person also many years ago, he said to me that even if you should go out, out and you're invited and sometimes you pray, don't open up your wallet and show everybody what you have. It's always better the Sunnah of Rasulullah to disclose what I have and not to openly display all the favors that you have. Don't display a jama'ah. And I could I don't, never understand someone, brother, also Allah blessed him, mashallah. But he always looks so humble. And the car that he drove was such a, like an ordinary car. And I couldn't understand this brother, Allah blessed him with so much of reason. But yet he's so humble. And that's ultimately the sunnah of Abu Rasulullah to protect our family and to protect myself from this hasad and from this uh, just jealousy jama'ah. Another incident also, since the beginning of time, so then uh, uh, Shaitan was evicted from the Jannah, and Adam was also evicted from the Jannah. So Adam then lived in the dunya, and Adam had two sons, Habil and Qabil. And from the sons, the family grew, the family was extended. So then there was a, the girl, and Qabil was in love with this girl. But Habib was also, and Habib also wanted to, to marry this girl. So then, then they went to the father and they asked the father, Daddy, what should we do? My, I mean, I, it's my right to marry the, uh, this girl with the same family. So Nabi Adam said, we will put a matter forward to Allah. So we're going to, both of you, we have to make a sacrifice. That's the advice that Allah gave. And from the sacrifice, Allah will then choose which one. Allah will choose the sacrifice, accept the sacrifice, and that's the one that was ma that was married, this particular girl. So they made the sacrifice. Fabi made the sacrifice, Habi made the sacrifice, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then accepted the sacrifice of, of Habil. So Habil then ended, was supposed to end up in marrying this girl. But Habil was so hasad, he was so enraged, Allah selected the sacrifice of why is it that Allah didn't accept my, my sacrifice and why can't I marry the girl? So this hasad drove him to the point that he also, the first crime on the face of the earth were committed by children of the one child of Nabi Adam because of hasad, because of jealousy, because of being envious Jamaat Muslim. So how should we protect ourselves? So our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu they teach us and if we, anything that we see of uh, that's nice, that's beautiful, whether it's a car, whether it's Allah bless my family with a particular gift or blessing or have that Quran, then Nabi Muhammad then gives us guidelines. We have to say, Tabarakallah. We have to say, May Allah bless you. We have to say, Allah mazid. Wa Allah increase him in blessings. We have to say, Allah masali ala nabi. We have to say, Salawat of beloved Rasulullah. We have to constantly recite Qul Allah Ahad Surah Ikhlas. We have to recite Qul A'udhu Rabbi Al-Khalaq. And even in Qul A'udhu in the Surah Al-Khalaq, Min Hasidin Ida Hasad. In the Surah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions that we have to protect ourselves from the evil eye. And the way that we have to protect ourselves from this evil eye, by constantly recite the Ikhlas, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Al-Khalaq, and Surah Nas. And to the point also, we also have to commonly, continuously, we have to also recite Surah uh, uh, Ayatul Kursi. So this will then uh, be a means for protection for myself, a means of protection for my family, and do not 
unnecessary discourse what I have. So my advice to Jamaat, we have so many people that's affected by that they say jinn because of and even the hadith of Allah Rasulullah says sometimes is the jinn that also they uh, look through my eyes and this jinn then have an effect on that particular person and then we find the person just you know become sick and we don't know why so we should not allow ourselves to become vulnerable to other people's looking at our wealth, looking at our ni'mah, and we do not protect ourselves. So inshallah, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, um, you know, protect us from this illness and from this disease. As mentioned in our beloved Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam says, this illness is so bad, this illness is so severe in the eyes of Allah, where Rasul sallallahu says, inna al-hasada yamhu al-hasanat. That hasad and jealousy and this evil eye is so bad in the eyes of Allah, it expiates, it wipes away all our good deeds. So that that yeah, we find ourselves that we have no good deeds. Al hasad yakul hasanat. Rasulullah says that hasad it eats away my good deeds. And Rasul makes a similar view. He says, like the fire eats away uh, wood, that is the way how our hasad eats away all our good deeds. And the only way we can protect ourselves from this evil because hasad is not, it's an illness from the heart. It's an illness from the heart, Jamaah. And so that's why we can't really see it. So the only way that we can preserve and look after ourselves uh, because it's, a, it's an illness of the heart and we can only then clean it or we can only then, uh, you know, make my heart, uh, my heart healthy as a protection from this illness by ilm and by constantly, number one, ilm and amal, execution of that ilm, ilm, because the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised what we need to recite, and constantly make dua for protection of our family and protection of our friends and our community from this particular illness of hasad. Insha'Allah, we'll have to be that. Tonight we'll have uh, our boys for uh, youngsters from the community, we invite them to come to the mosque and play some uh, soccer, we'll have some. Uh, a uh, outside, you know, just right for our youngsters so that they can be connected to Rasulullah. Allah. Inshallah, Alhamdulillah, these beautiful days are coming up. So we're going to draw them closer to Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring some friends here to the mosque also tonight. So all those uh, family that wants to bring the children tonight to the mosque, I think you might have to shah, please come so that they can enjoy and become connected to Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we'll be doing for the honor of Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.
واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسول قال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى ايضا ان الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين ودمر اليهود والنصارى اعداء اعداء الدين اللهم شدد شملهم اللهم زد جمعهم اللهم زد ديارهم عباد الله ان الله يامركم بالعفو والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اقيم الصلاه حافظ على Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya as-salat, hayya al-falah, qul qamat as-salat, qul qamat as-salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله